Hi you guys! This is part 2 of video series about filters. In this part we will be talking about ND filters or so-called neutral density filters. Neutral density filters are just dark pieces of glass which you can put over your lens to cut off some light which is getting into the camera. Why would you want to do that? Well, you would usually use ND filter during the day in a bright light and you would like to use settings which let a lot of light into the camera, like very slow shutter speed or combination of slow shutter speed and wide aperture, for example. And without the filter, you have a chance to get overexposed image. So, in this video, we will be talking about situations in which ND filter can come handy, as well as we will discuss ND filters in general. So, let's get started. There are two types of neutral density filters, and those are filters with fixed density and filters with variable density. The main disadvantage of fixed density filters is the fact that you might need to carry multiple filters in your bag with a different density, because depending on situation and desired exposure, you might need to cut off a different amount of light. Unlike variable density filters, which are so-called all-in-one filters, which lets you to change their density just by rotating them. Most variable density filters can cut off up to 8 stops of light. If you need to cut off more light, you will probably need to use fixed density filter. You can find fixed density filters which can cut off up to 10 stops of light. And you can also stack them on top of each other for stronger effect. Though if you are using fixed density filter at high density, 10 stops for example, you might run into the problem of the difficulty to focus and even compose, because when you look through the viewfinder it's too dark. In this case you will need to take the filter off, focus, compose and then put it back on. Here a variable density filter has its advantages because you don't need to take the filter off in this situation. You can just turn the filter to the lower density, focus and compose and then turn the filter back to the higher density. Also keep in mind that variable density filters are usually bigger and standard lens hood might not fit when you have this filter on your lens. Though you can buy another hood which will fit specific filter. And believe me, hood might be very useful for those type of filters because they have a tendency to create pretty bad flare from the sun. And it's not just this pretty flare which sometimes we add to the photo on purpose, but this nasty flare which creates color shift, uh, loss of sharpness and contrast in the image. Another problem which might occur with variable density filter is so-called cross-polarization. Cross-polarization usually occurs on the darker end of the variable filter and uh, it, in the photo it looks kind of like the darkness is not even. You just get these dark and light patches in the image. Like this one, for example. This image is like complete disaster. It's got flares, it's got color shift, and it's got cross polarization. And remember that all ND filters are not made equal. Different brands of filters produce different quality of filters, which of course will influence your image quality because filters can cause a lot of problems, like for example loss of sharpness, color shift, vignetting, flares, and in general fixed density filters are known to be better in terms of image quality than variable density filters. But I'm sure that the technology always progress 
and the company starts to make better and better variable density filters because at the end of the day it's much more convenient. So before you buy the filter just do your research because you will find a different quality and as well as different price range. Now let's talk about different situations when ND filter can come handy. First of all, it's silky water effect during the day. For this effect, we will need to use slow shutter speed. And of course, we will need the right subject to photograph. And the right subject for this effect is running water. And the most popular are waterfalls. It also can be a stream, can be an ocean or even a lake. Like this one, for example. This image I took without filter using lowest ISO of 100, which means least light. Also, I used the highest f-stop, which for my lens was f22, which again means less, least light. And at those settings, I was able to use the slowest shutter speed I was able to use was 130th, if I wouldn't use a filter. And at 1/30th of the second, you can still see that the camera was able to freeze the water. You can see the waves. And also pay attention that in this photo, you can also see the ducks on the water, which are swimming around. For the next photo, I did put ND filter on the lens. And as you can see, I was able to cut off some light, uh, about eight stops and use shutter speed of 8 seconds, which gave me this uh, silky water which kind of looks more like glass, kind of smooth without any waves. And the slower shutter speed you will be able to use, the silkier the water will be. So the denser the filter, the darker the filter, the slower shutter speed and the silkier the water. Also notice that there is no more ducks in the picture. This is another fact which ND filter can come in handy. This is a fact of making people or other moving subjects disappear in the photo. This can be handy when you are photographing something and people constantly walking back and forth and you can't get this picture where there is no people in it. You can try to shoot the photo with a slow shutter speed and if the people are moving, they will not be visible in the photo. Just to show you how it works, I decided to walk across the frame and take my picture at different shutter speeds. This photo was taken with no filter at shutter speed 1, 1 25th of the second and as you can see, I am sharp and clear in the photo. For this photo, we put ND filter on, which led us to cut off some light and slow our shutter speed down to one second. And as you can see, I'm already starting to look like a ghost. For this photo, we increased ND filter density and slowed down the shutter speed to two seconds. And for this one, to four seconds. And as you can see, in this photo I finally disappeared. Another effect you could create with ND filters are streaking clouds. For this effect you will need to use slow shutter speed and you will need clouds which are moving. For all those three effects where you use ND filter and slow shutter speed uh, remember, you will have to have your camera on the tripod or on something uh, to make sure that everything else in the image is sharp. And also, the denser the filter, the darker the ND filter is, the slower the shutter speed you will be able to use and the stronger effect will be. And remember that this applies mostly for photography during the daytime when there is a lot of light and you need ND filter to cut that light off to be able to use slower shutter speeds. 
During the night, you will be able to use slower shutter speeds and achieve these effects even without ND filter because there is not that much light. Another case when ND filters might come handy is when using flash or strobe during the day. Let's say you have backlit subject and you would like to fill in the shadows from the front by using the flash. Besides that, you would also like to achieve a shallow depth of field. To achieve shallow depth of field, we will need to use wide aperture, and in this case it was 2.8. This also means a lot of light into the camera because the aperture is wide. Also, we have to keep in mind that cameras have a sync speed. When you connect flash or strobe, camera has a certain sync speed past which you can go because you will get problems. If you would like to learn a little bit more about sync speed and using off-camera flash, please click on this link which will take you to the video about it. In my camera, sync speed is 1 to 50th of the second which means I cannot go faster than that. So, as you can see, at those settings without ND filter, image is completely overexposed. I cannot make my shutter speed faster to make it darker because I'm planning to use flash and also I wouldn't want to make my aperture smaller because it will give me more depth of field and I will not get a shallow depth of field as I would like to. But I have an option. This is to use ND filter to cut off some of that light. And here you have it. Picture taken with ND filter but with no flash yet. As you can see it was exposed for background and because I'm backlit, my face is kind of dark. To brighten my face up, I will add some flash from the front. I always start with full power flash and then dial it down if it's needed. In this case, full power flash was just fine. Another effect for which ND filter might come handy is panning during the day. Panning is a technique of photographing moving subject and following it with a camera while taking a photo. As a result, you're supposed to get your subject sharp, but background should have a motion blur from the movement. The most important during panning is shutter speed. It has to be slow enough to capture the motion blur in the background, but fast enough to still keep the subject sharp. I would say you should stay somewhere in between 1 15th of the second and 1 1 25th of the second, depending on the subject's speed. Remember, the slower the subject is, the slower shutter speed you have to use to get the motion blur in the background. For example, if you're taking pictures uh, of bicycles, as I did, shutter speed 1 15, 1 30th of the second will probably be the best. But if you're taking picture of the racing car, which moves much faster, you probably need to speed it up to 1 60th or even to 1 1 25th of the second. So, in the cases when you need to slow down your shutter speed to 1 15th or 1 30th of the second during the day to get a panning effect, you might not be able to get a good exposure with those settings. You will get an overexposed image because there is too much light and the slower shutter speed will let even more light and you will need to cut this light off somehow. And this is when ND filter might come handy. Another way how you can use ND filter is for shooting the video with your DSLR. The general rule is that you have to use shutter speed of 1 over double the frame rate. So if your frame rate 
is 30 frames per second, you have to use shutter speed of 1 60th of the second. So right now my camera is set to 1 60th of the second, also to ISO 100, which is the lowest ISO. And in these settings, I had to set my aperture to f22 to get a good exposure. At this aperture, my depth of field is large because this is a small aperture and gives you a lot of depth of field. At this aperture, I will not be able to achieve this nice blurry background behind me. So if I would like to achieve a blurry background, I have to close down my aperture, bring it to a low F number. So let's try to do this. Let's change my aperture to F 2.8 and see what happens. And as you can see, at f2.8, we got totally overexposed picture because the large aperture lets a lot of light into the camera. So what can we do if we want to stay at the same settings but be able to get a good exposure? This is when ND filter can come handy. So let's try to put ND filter on and see what happens. As you can see, when we put ND filter on, we were able to cut off some light and bring our exposure to normal at the same settings. And as you can see right now, I have a blurry background behind me. Now let's talk about graduated ND filters. Graduated ND filter is the filter one half of which is of neutral density with transition into other half, which is clear. Graduated ND filters have three properties. First of all, it's position of transition. It's where natural density part of the filter and clear part meets. Then it density strengths and rate of the transition. It's how smooth is the gradient between natural density part and clear part of the filter. You can find graduated ND filters in both types, screw-on filters as well as drop-in filters. But I think in this case drop-ins have advantage because they let you actually change the position of the transition, which is not possible with screw-on filters. Main use of graduated ND filters is darkening of the bright skies. They work the best if you have pretty straight horizon. Though if you have an even horizon where some elements are sticking out, they are taller like this house in this picture for example, you might run into the problem that you will also darken the top of that subject. So you have to be careful about that because in some cases it might look very unnatural. I hope this video was useful to you and you learned a lot today. I was trying to cover as much on ND filters as possible, but if you know some other cases where ND filter can come handy, please post in the comments below. And also, if you're already using ND filter, please share with us which brand do you use, if you like it or you don't like it. It might be very useful for other people. And I see you next time in part 3 about circular polarizers.